with you, if you could go with us into the Word of God, we'll be coming from St. John chapter 12. I will be reading from the 21st century King James Version. And I will begin my reading at verse 28, and it reads, Father, glorify thy name. Then there came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And the people, uh, therefore, who stood by and heard it said, it is thunder. Mm -hmm. Others said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he says, signifying what death he should die. We we'll thank the Lord for the reading of the scripture. And uh, I will be taking uh, the subject that God has placed in my spirit will be coming from verse 32. Uh, and my subject will be, uh, if I be lifted up. Do me a favor right quickly, church, if you would turn to your neighbor, we found that many things come by touching and agreeing, and uh, I would like for you to say, neighbor, neighbor. Lift, up lift up Jesus, lift up Jesus. As I set the metaphorical premise for the spiritual application of this sermon in your hearing today, uh, if you or those of you have noticed, uh, I have started this particular month uh, by putting great emphasis on the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to understand that the intended purpose uh, of these sermons are to share some things to remind us of the purpose of the life and death of Jesus. Uh, that it will ultimately lead us to the celebratory uh, celebration or events of Resurrection Sunday morning. Uh, I want you to understand from the account of the Gospels uh, that deals with the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. It takes place uh, before the Last Supper, marking the beginning of Passover. Uh, in St. John, our text, chapter 12, beginning at verse 9 through 11, the cloud crowd carries uh, and gathers around Jesus, and they believe in him after the raising of Lazarus yes. from the dead. Then the next day, the multitude, they gathered for the feast in Jerusalem uh, to welcome Jesus as he entered to Jerusalem. According to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we found from verse 12 through 19, Jesus ascends from the mountain of Olive towards Jerusalem. And the people, thank you, Lord, went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Amen. Blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Yes. And uh, they laid palm branches uh, in the road before him. Right. Yeah. Church, I want you to understand that palm branches or palm trees to that degree is a symbol of victory right. and triumph and peace and also eternal life. Yeah. And they laid it before him to welcome Jesus as he triumphantly entered in Jerusalem. Yeah. Now beginning uh, in verse 21 of our text, John introduced us to some people of Greece. Uh, thank you, Lord, our uh, nationality. And these men were in Jerusalem to observe the Passover. Amen. Uh, on the first day of the week when the Greeks arrived, Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem five days before his crucifixion. That's right. uh, apparently, the Greeks uh, uh, had been in town long enough uh, to recognize that Philip uh, was one of Jesus' disciples. Uh, so they approached Philip and requested to see Jesus. And Philip, he told Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And uh, Andrew told Jesus about the Greeks desiring to see him. Jesus, thank you, Lord, response to them, thank you, Lord, was rather peculiar. Uh, because, thank you, Lord. Because this is what he said to Andrew and Philip. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Amen. And I don't mean any, any harm, but in other words, the fact that the Greeks or uh, Gentiles were in town. 
uh, desiring to see Jesus was clear indication that the time for him to die for the sins of the world. Uh, and church, I want you also to understand in our particular text and in study, there is not a specific text uh, that indicate that Jesus saw the, the Greeks on that day. But I want you to understand that he would clearly meet them on the other side of the cross. Yeah, yeah. Y'all rest for a little while. Uh, in order for Greeks and Gentiles and mankind as a whole to receive the new life that Jesus Christ would offer them, uh, he must be lifted up upon the cross Amen. that all men should be drawn unto him. Y'all right. look a little strange, but it's going to get better after a while. I want you to understand, church, we got to understand typically uh, it is not the mentality of the majority of people to be drawn to things that is ugly and impossible in nature. Uh, we are usually, thank you, Lord, drawn to beautiful things, uh, such as the beauty of the majestic mountains or the spacious oceans. We are usually drawn to beautiful, the beauty of the, cloud, of the stars in, in the sky. Uh, and even the fresh, thank you, Lord, falling snow. Uh, Y'all bear us for a little while. Uh, because of our human nature, uh, in the physical sense, uh, most men are usually drawn to beautiful women. Uh, they are drawn to the luster and power of automobiles. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, usually women are drawn uh, to a man that they consider to be handsome yeah. or uh, what they call eye candy, especially if he's successful. Yes. Oh, y'all bear for a little while. Most people are drawn to people who are loving, caring, and kind. To people that make them feel good and feel valued. Uh, just to be in their presence. Yeah. But I don't mean any harm, but most of us are in pus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, nauseated and sickened and sometimes disgusted uh, just because of death. Uh, Y'all bear us for a little while. Even those of us who are compassionate, uh, thank you, Lord, even to a hardened criminal, uh, thank you, Lord, it's hard for us to watch the death of a criminal. Y'all bear us for a little while by hanging. Uh, nor, thank you, Lord, enjoy watching someone die by a firing squad. Amen. Uh, I doubt if there's anybody here today who would want to be an eyewitness to an execution in the lecture chair. Oh, yeah. uh, or enjoy watching the life slowly leave a body of a criminal dying by lethal injection. Uh, you see, my friend, there is nothing attractive or beautiful about watching somebody die. Uh, but the question is, what about this death uh, of one of the most, thank you, Lord, innocent human beings ever to walk the face of the earth? Thank you, Lord. Dying such a horrible, thank you, Lord, and cruel death uh, on a Roman cross that draws us to him. Oh, we all rest for a little while. Truly, God is good. Uh, to lift up Jesus as he instructed us, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, yeah. will draw all men unto me. Yeah. Uh, church, I don't mean any harm, but I believe that if we would examine the reasons, there are at least three reasons I would like to share, and I'm going to try to get on out of your way, uh, that will help us to understand why is there power, thank you, Lord, in drawing men to Jesus Christ who died upon the cross. Will y'all share it? Uh, go with me for a little while, and we'll try to get on out of your way. Well, the crucified Jesus, thank you, Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, it draws us because you got to understand that he meets the greatest need of mankind. Uh, it was once said that in the sovereignty of God's provisions, uh, to demonstrate his love towards mankind, whom he created in his own image. Uh, Y'all rest for a little while, but if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need would have been technology, 
God would have sent us a scientist. Yeah. Yeah. If our greatest need would have been uh, money management, uh -huh. God would have sent us an economist. Uh -huh. If our greatest need would have been affordable housing, uh -huh. God would have sent us an architect. Yeah. If our greatest need would have been transportation, uh -huh. God would have sent us an engineer. Right. If our greatest need would have been pleasure, yeah. God would have sent us an entertainer. Yes. And although a loving God uh, so graciously provide an educators and scientists and economists and architects and, thank you, Lord, engineers and entertainers to benefit mankind on other areas of life, the reality, church, is that our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a Savior. And to him it said, oh, God, I'll rest a little while. God sent his son. And they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove Thank you, Lord, my Savior, live. Oh, y'all bear for a little while. Church, I don't mean any harm, but there is not one single, thank you, Lord, a solitary soul on earth that does not need a Savior. Every woman, every man, every boy and girl, every child needs a Savior because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. I don't mean no harm, church, but while there are many things that are distinguished us from each other, uh, such as race and nationalities, even the color of our skin and language, there is one thing that unites all, thank you, Lord, humanity, and that is the need for a Savior. Y'all rest for a little while. Uh, and I want you to know, uh, y'all rest for a little while, that, that not single drop of Mohammed, not one single drop of uh, Buddha, nor Confucius blood can save a soul of mankind. Only the blood of Jesus can appease the wrath of the Almighty God against the sins of sinful man. Only the blood of Jesus could cleanse us from our sins and make us whole, thank you Lord, and acceptable in the sight of God. Oh yes, church, I don't mean no harm, uh, thank you Lord. The reason we are drawn to Jesus Christ uh, and his suffering and his death upon the cross of Calvary is because, thank you Lord, he meets the greatest need for mankind. Thank you Lord, and that is our need for a savior. Oh, the hymn is said and reminds up, thank you, Lord, that in times like these, yes. we need a Savior. Yes. In times like these, we need an anchor. Yes. Oh, he goes on to say, be very sure, yes. be very sure, your anchor holds and grip the solid rock. Yes. Oh, he tells us that that rock is Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes, he is the one. Yes. That rock is Jesus, yes. the only one. Yes. Be Sure, be very sure. Your anchor hold and grip the solid rock. Church, I don't mean no harm, but number two, I didn't come to worry on today. Another reason, thank you, Lord, that we are drawn to the crucified Christ is because the crucified Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary reveals the greatest love for mankind. Oh, y'all bear for a little while. When church, I don't mean no harm, but when we desire to express our love to someone, we usually text them just to say, I love you. We'll send them a romantic card. Uh, we will buy them a dozen roses. Uh, we, thank you, Lord, will give them a box of chocolate candy. Oh, y'all looking a little strange. We will give them a gift by, thank you, Lord, buying them a bottle of their favorite perfume or cologne. But I don't mean no harm, church, but when Jesus wanted to express his divine love for us, he sent the very best that he had. Oh, thank you, Lord. He he sent his only begotten son. Well, thank you, Lord. And we found, thank you, Lord, in John 3, 16 and 17, it reminds us that God gave 
gave himself absolutely and completely for us. He held nothing back. No. Uh, even his son, thank you, Lord, became obedient unto death for our behalf. Amen. So that's why it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Oh, God, for a little while. If I don't mean no harm, church, but if you want to see the depth of God's love, you got to look at the cross. If you want to see the height of God's love, look at the cross. If you want to see the width and the length of God's love, look at the cross. We found, thank you, Lord, that Romans 5 and 8 gives us confirmation of God's demonstration of his own love towards us. When it declared God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, y'all bears for a little while. I didn't come to worry about God is good. Oh, thank you, Lord. We found, thank you, Lord, that Chris Tomlin says when he described at the cross, he said, there is a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There is a place, uh, thank you, Lord, where streams of grace flows deep and wide. Uh, thank you, Lord. There, thank you, Lord, are all the love I've ever found. Come like floods, come flowing down. Yeah. Oh, but I thank you, Lord. I'm kind of old school. Uh -huh. So I like when the hymns begin to say, Isaac, thank you, Lord. What said it this way? At the cross, yeah. at the cross, yeah. where I first saw the light. Yeah. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. Yeah. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy. All the day. Okay, I don't mean no harm. What makes you happy when you think about Jesus being upon the cross of Calvary? Well, I want you to understand that the cross tells us that Jesus loved us, thank you, Lord, in eternal path. Oh, thank you, Lord. Before the foundations of the world were laid, and I don't, I don't mean no harm, there's some good news today. Yes. That Jesus will continue to love us throughout all eternity. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. The cross tells us, thank you, Lord, that before we were ever born, oh, oh, thank you, Lord, Jesus loved us despite our greatest sin, despite our greatest failures, despite, thank you, Lord, our greatest shortcomings and our greatest imperfections. Somebody need to tell the Lord, thank you. Because when I think about the goodness of the Lord, when I think about what he's done for me, Oh, glory. Thank you to the Lord is good. Uh, thank you, Lord. Consider this, if you will. I don't mean no harm. But those of us who have had the opportunity to witness an execution where it was made by TV, there is something I want you to understand. Uh, thank you, Lord. When a man is executed in the electric chair or in the gas chamber, uh, thank you, Lord. I want you to understand that they will strap, thank you, Lord, his his hands, his arms, thank you, Lord, by his side. Amen. When a man is executed by a firing squad or being hung, they will take the man's arm and they will tie them behind his back. Uh -huh. Oh, God, rest for a little while. You got to understand, but when Jesus was crucified upon the cross of Calvary, those Roman soldiers didn't realize what they were doing. For Jesus' arms were stretched wide. They nailed him on the rock. Uh, thank you, Lord. They nailed him with his arms in an open position. You got to understand an open position, thank you, Lord, is an indication that refers, thank you, Lord, when a person's arms is open, uh, it's inviting someone to come near. When the arms are open, it's saying, thank you, Lord, come unto me. saying, I love you. Uh, I, I, I thank you, Lord. I, I don't mean no harm to you. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. So John began to tell us in John 15 and verse 13, he began saying, greater love has no man in this than a man that will lay down his life for his friends. He's beginning to say that, 
thank you, Lord. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Of oh, henceforth I call you not servants. Uh, uh, for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. Uh, but I call you friends. Uh, oh, thank you, Lord, uh, for all things uh, that I have heard of my Father. Uh, I have made known unto you. Uh, and I heard.
of the legion, of the angels, to come to his rescue. There's 72,000 angels that came to his rescue. And we know through study that one angel may heal 85,000. You got to understand the magnitude huh, of what Jesus did. Because huh, he could have came down yeah. off of the cross of Calvary. Huh, but thank you, Lord. Huh, I want you to understand. Huh, thank you, Lord. Huh, many don't fully understand huh, what the Apostle Paul was saying huh, in Galatians 2 and 20. Huh, when he said, I huh, am crucified with Christ. Draw 
of men unto me. Ha, he just wasn't talking ha, about us just giving him praise alone. Ha, but he was talking about ha, us coming in ha, a relationship ha, with him. Ha, he was talking about ha, us being transformed ha, into his express image. Ha, he was telling us ha, we got to repent. Accept the Lord as our personal Savior. If we believe the greatest thing we needed, thank the Lord, was a Savior. If we believe the greatest thing we needed was the love with nobody else would love us. He loved us. If we believe he made the greatest, the greatest sacrifice. I don't mean no harm. I'm getting ready to let you go, church. But for many years, it has become more and more prevalent that churches are concerned about drawing and winning people and souls of Christ. They keep adding other things to the church other than lifting up Jesus. I don't mean no harm. Yes, we make mention ha, of Jesus, ha, but many times ha, he's not our main focus. Y'all rest for a little ha, ha. I'm going to try to get on out of the way. Ha. Churches have come up ha, with different methodologies, ha, trying to draw people ha, to church and to Christ. Ha. They come up with a formula. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus various programs. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus thank the Lord. Ha. Praise bands ha, and praise teams. Ha. A breath of a little while. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus musical concerts. Ha. A breath of a little while. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus exercise programs. Ha. A breath of a little while. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus sports programs. Ha. A breath of a little while. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus store prizes. Ha. A breath of a little while. Ha. Jesus, ha, plus entertainment. Ha. A well-known speaker. I don't want you to know there's nothing wrong or simple about all those other things. But the problem begins when we start thinking that that's the only thing that would draw people to God. I want you to know before I let you go, when we look at the old church, back in the beginning, when the church got started, they didn't have Christian programs. Thank you, Lord. They didn't have a church building, but thousands were drawn to Jesus because they lifted him up. I come to ask you today to say we need to go back. We need to go back to lifting up the name of Jesus. He said if I, if I